Bangkok's long road to recovery, it's too early to open, haze alarm and a COVID update for Southeast Asia. That's all coming up in Good Morning Thailand on the Tiger. Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. I'm Jay, this is Tim, and it's a gloomy Monday morning in Bangkok. Hey, you're just back from your lumberjack weekend, are you? That's right. I, I, I took a trip to, to my cabin in the, you know, the woods. The Ozarks. Like one does, exactly. Uh, but hey, I have a better question for you. Did you get to hang out with Russell Crowe over well, the weekend? Well, good question. No. <laughs> uh, but apparently a lot of people did see him yeah. roaming around Bangkok. He's been very busy on social media. And a lot of people are saying, uh, well, rather than good on you, Rusty, and great to see you in Thailand. They've been going, uh, privileged, he wouldn't have had to have done the COE. They've just been getting stuck into him. But uh, welcome, Russell, and uh, if you'd like to, we've got a spot right here in the middle, if you'd like to join in tomorrow's program. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be he's, rushing. He's Australian, isn't he? He's New Ze he was born in Wellington, New Zealand, but okay. he, uh, his career is all in Australia. He's known as an Australian actor, although technically... He's a New Zealander. What an actor. Don't get that wrong because the New Zealanders get very, um, very funny about that. I see. Uh, well, let me just give a quick shout out to Mr. Bob Marlow. Uh, Hello, thank, Bob. Thank you, Bob, for being a Tiger legend and a Tiger member. Great to have you on the team. Thank you for supporting us. And uh, actually, Tim, you have an update from Friso and Greg. Oh, yes. Uh, now, over the weekend, I, in fact, in this very shirt, which has been washed since, I went down to the Klong Doi slums. Now, we spoke a lot about it last year when we were talking about the Bangkok Community Help Project. And uh, I went down and I saw Friso and Greg and they were showing me firsthand the situation there. Glad to report that the situation has really improved. Certainly they're doing a lot of testing still, but they're finding very few cases. So a much better situation than it was about, uh, well, two or three months ago. Okay. But um, yeah, I've got three reports. Mm -hmm. This is just a very small selection of one of the reports. Welcome to the Tiger. Now today I'm at the Klong Toy Slums, which is such an unusual area. It's sort of bordered between Sukhumvit Road and the Tao Praya River. And on one side of the Sukhumvit Road, you've got all the swish condos and the bright, shiny buildings of Ekamai and Tonglor. Then on the other side, you've got this very close community of high density housing. Right, and you can find more of that later in the week. That's right. I've got to edit it all. <laughs> thousands of files I've got to figure out. And talking about thousands of files and emails you get, we received an email oh, from no. Mr. Tony Audsley. I hope I've pronounced that correctly, but Mr. Tony has made um, our day on Friday, especially Friday evening, I got to see this picture. Made your day. Yeah. Um, here's a picture of someone uh, resembling someone. Well, okay, so this is, uh, I think his name's Werner Kempler. Yes. Who used to perform in a show called Hogan's Heroes, yes. which we spoke about. We seem to be talking a lot about 60s comedies at the moment. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, apparently I look like Colonel Clink, which... Yeah, Colonel Clink. Good on you. Right. And apparently I'm some man called Schultz. Oh, Schultz. Uh, yeah, Schultz. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. I know nothing. Oh, okay. So it means something to us, but not to you young whippersnappers. I see. Right. So... Uh, oh, we've got new microphones, by the way. Can yeah. you hear us? Can you hear us? Right. Yep, we did, actually. Um, as we keep on continuing to set up our studio, uh, our table is not here yet. Waiting for the table. This is a pretty decent uh, backup table. But don't wobble it. That's right. It but, our, but our real table is going to be glorious. Room for cereal packets and uh, That's right. trees and all sorts of things. That's right. But Bring the plants back. Oh, Henrietta, Susan. And who else? We had a third one. I don't know. Why do you give them names? They're plants. They, they have feelings. Call one, two, and three. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Uh, we're going to get into a quick break. And once we return from the break, we're going to be looking at Bangkok's long road to recovery. Stay tuned. You're watching Good Morning Thailand on The Tiger.
Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand. I'm Jay. This is Tim. Tim, it's now time to talk about, you know, the reopening once again. Uh, we're going to be reopening, looks like, on November 1st. We're full steam ahead, heading towards that date. But is Bangkok ready to open? That is a very important question. And secondly, ba Bangkok has a long road to recovery. It is no longer the city it used to be. We can't expect it to be what it was uh, pre-pandemic. Well, th there's going to be fewer shops open. Yes. But all the tourist attractions, I dare say, will be opening fairly quickly. Yeah. This November the 1st deadline is, is okay on paper, but the problem is that if you today say, oh, I'd like to go back to Thailand, and you pop on down to your local uh, embassy, they're going to say, we've got no idea what you're talking about. And that's because that... All these changes, all these proposals, even if they're passed by the Thai government, have got to go through the Royal Gazette and be rubber stamped right. before the embassies will get to hear about it. So this is part of the problem that TAT has got, uh, trying to say, come back to Thailand. But if you go down to your embassy today, the embassy officials are going to be, huh? Eh? So there's going to be a little bit of a delay there. As far as Bangkok's concerned, um, there was an article on the weekend talking about uh, some of the things that are issues that they hope to resolve. The president of the Thailand Hotels Association waxed lyrical, saying, well, firstly, they must simplify the pre-arrival paperwork. Yeah. I th think we could all agree with that. Yeah. Uh, the capital also needs more development to become a preferred destination for tourists. I found this was an interesting one. We had Bangkok Pat on the weekend saying that how Bangkok has changed. And uh, modernised. And modernised. And a lot of people saying that they don't like all the new development. They don't like it turning into a, a just another great big Asian city. They used to like the, the quirkiness and the tiness. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the president of the Thailand Hotels Association has got a different opinion, saying, well, we need more development. Just looking out the window, I'm not sure where they're going to put it, but good luck. Uh, they must reduce the air pollution. This is the thing yes, we're going to be talking, going to be talking about, about a, bit, a bit later. A tourism destination such as the Grand Palace have now enacted visitor quotas. Yeah. So the long queues that you may have experienced or the crowded locations uh, may be reduced. You might be able to book spots on apps. So I think you'll probably see quite a lot of modernisation in that regard, using the technology to make your visit uh, easier. But isn't that just replaced? Instead of waiting in line, you're just waiting to get there. You're waiting, waiting in a different line though, Jay. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, things like the Klongs, like the Klong Ong Ang, uh, a lot of work has gone into those over the, uh, the past two years, whilst a lot of tourists haven't been coming here. So I think you're going to see a lot of attention around the Klongs to clean up the Klongs yes. and then to gentrify the areas around the Klongs with markets and make them more tourist-friendly zones. Yeah. So these are some of the things that they say they're, they're looking at to make Bangkok a bit more presentable and friendly for tourists when they arrive. Right. I think a lot of people, though, are still saying just get rid of the paperwork we want to come mm -hmm. get off the plane get the stamp and just do our thing yeah no more paperwork no more certificate of entry no more thailand pass no more vaccine certificates that is just a long way off there is going to be a lot of paperwork or delays yes. i don't know for the short to medium term yeah and uh, generally it does take uh, thailand a longer time than others to get rid of paperwork Right. Uh, talking about uh, paperwork and, uh, you know, just the feelings around Bangkok. We've now been here one week. And uh, Tim, uh, I know you've uh, had to travel a little bit more than me. Uh, I've only stayed in the Asok area mostly, but I th you went free. You met Friso and Greg. Uh, you went to the slums over the weekend. Um, you had to buy shoes, so you went to the mall. What is what is your general feeling about you know Bangkok and the vibe? Yeah, I mean, at first we thought we were coming in the dark red zone. We're in the thick of it, you know. But um, I personally feel like I haven't felt like this is a dark red zone at all. Um, everyone's just going on about their day. Everything seems busy. Um, Terminal 21 is absolutely packed. Yeah, a lot of the shopping centres were very busy. I went to three different shopping centres over the weekend looking for shoes of all things. Mm -hmm. um, I probably covered about seven or eight BTS stations along the Sukhumvit line. I didn't go much beyond that except down to the Klong Toy slums. Um, yeah, the BTS was very busy. You do still see a lot of 
closed shops. So I think that is one of the areas that people are going to notice most when they come back is that a lot of Bangkok is still closed. There will be efforts, I'm sure, to try and get those shops open. But I'm also sure that a lot of them shut up shop, stopped paying a rent and went back to uh, up, up, you know, up country, back to their families. And they probably won't be coming back anytime soon. Well, that, that's two or three year yeah. process. Well, for example, like let's take this, uh, we're in Asok right now. In the Asok area, yes, there are a couple of shops that are fully closed and they stand out because, you know, Asok's a quite a vibrant area. You know, people here come here for work. There's a lot of office buildings, a lot of uh, residential this, this areas. This is a, like a, a sort of a CBD, yeah. a business district. Yeah. So w- when there is suddenly a shop um, in, in a building or like a small mall closed, it just stands out and you're just like, oh, what, what happened there? You can see the dust on the windows but generally I felt most of the shops are quite open so I guess it also depends on where exactly you like to stay if you're coming to Bangkok and you're going away from these areas I'm sure a lot more things are closed but around Asok, Nana, Tonglo, Sayam you know uh, where the major hotspots uh, for tourism uh, is um, most of those places are quite vibrant and still quite lively. Yeah, I think as soon as you sort of get a bit further out of Bangkok, things are, yeah, sure, going to be clo- a bit more closed up. But the sooner you come back, the sooner yeah. the things can reopen. But it's not just going to happen overnight. As I said, I think it's going to be a, a two or three year process. Well, talking about if it's too early to open, that leads us to our second topic. Is it too early to open? So there was a poll done over the weekend and a majority of the people disagree with the government's decision. A majority of the Thai people uh, that the country should reopen on November 1st, saying it's that the time is not yet right. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, that they sort of think that Thailand is just screaming for the tourists to return, but they're not. There's a lot of Thais, including the ones who were polled, who actually don't think Thailand is quite ready yet. That's right. That surprises me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it surprises some of you, but uh, yeah, some of these numbers. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll give you some numbers to start off. So um, 1,329 people were uh, surveyed throughout, uh, spread out throughout the country. And that's now, about average for a Suwan Dusan poll. I thought they should do a lot more, but it's quite a small number. But anyways, um, they were quite spread out around the country to get different opinions. Um, asked whether the country is ready to reopen it to tourists uh, without quarantine requirements, a majority, 60%, uh, 60.2%. 1-0% said no, while the remaining said yes. So that's quite a high number, 60% saying that they shouldn't open. Uh, what are the unfavourable conditions against reopening? That was a question. Yep. 72% said Thai population has not yet been fully vaccinated. That's so right. Thais want the vaccination process to be much more fully rolled out before they think the country will be ready again for tourism. Yep. Um, asked regarding the benefits, uh, what would, how would the country benefit if, if they did reopen? Um, 77% cited the revival of the economy. So, you know, people do want that as much as everyone else uh, working and living in Thailand. 74.74% would uh, have jobs and earn a living. Uh, 68% of the country would generate income. So, yeah, they do want the country to open because it is beneficial for themselves. And a very high proportion, 83%, when asked what are the unfavourable effects of reopening, 83% said COVID-19 infections might uh, rise, rise again. again. Yeah. So this seems to be, again, another theme that Thai people have got a... They're certainly risk-averse. The government, generally over the past couple of years, has been risk-averse and very careful. It looks like Thais generally are just taking a, a very cautious approach. There's no, just throw the doors open and throw your mask in the rubbish bin. That's not going to happen. There seems to be a, quite a genuine fear of um, the COVID-19 cases rising. And it makes sense because on one hand, you have the government and the TAT saying, let's reopen. And then health experts on the other side saying, hey, guys, be careful. We're going to have a spike in cases. We're going to have double the figures. So the people, you know, obviously would be confused and, and scared. Um, I just wanted to know yes. what happened to my coffee culture, coffee this morning. Right. You promised me a cappuccino. I did. And you've given me a cup of water. Well, I'll tell you what. I, went, I took these beautiful coffee culture mugs to the coffee machine. And unfortunately, because we are in an office that we share with a lot of people, there was a line. 
How dare they? How dare they? Didn't they say, oh, it's Jay, we better get out of the way because he's a well, famous TV star. Well, it's, it's our fault because we put our beautiful coffee culture beans into the coffee machine, which people want to try. So can they, you blame them? I mean, wouldn't you want to try coffee culture coffee? They probably didn't take you seriously because you dressed like a lumberjack. Possibly. A very tall lumberjack. I thought lumberjack. I was a farmer boy in the big city. You just bring your axe and uh, <laughs> get out of my way. Yeah, but anyways, uh, thank you, Coffee Culture, for the coffee this morning. I did have it earlier. I couldn't get my second cup. So thank you. Uh, you can find your roast coffee and ground coffee uh, from Thai farmers around the world at coffeeculture.asia. Right, we're going to take a quick break. and we're going to come back talking about the haze is coming. Oh, dear. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Thailand. Tim, it's time to ring the alarms. The haze is coming. The haze is coming. Yeah, they're talking about the haze already in the list of things that uh, they wanted fixed up in Thailand. Yep. The Thailand Hotels Association said in a Bangkok Post article over the weekend that they wanted the haze problem fixed up. Right. And there's been other articles saying, well... There's all these things being done to get ready for the annual hay season. Starts about December. Yep. And it coincides with a few things. It coincides mostly with the burning off season up in the north and the northeast and across the borders mm -hmm. where the farmers, they've uh, taken their crops of corn and rice and uh, maize, or well, maize is corn, a few other things, and then they burn them off. Why do they burn them off? Well, it's the cheapest way. It's the cheapest thing. They don't have the ploughs, the uh, the big electronic, electronic <laughs> machines, oh, yeah. the ploughing machines okay. to to do it mechanically. That's what I meant to say. So they burn them off, and then it makes a whole lot of smoke. It coincides with the monsoon swinging around to the north northeast, and where does <clears throat> all that smoke go? Well, it blows down into uh, the centre of Thailand and Bangkok. Yeah. Um, in particular, in Bangkok and the Central Plains region, the haze usually coincides with the winter months, which brings cooler, denser air that prevents pollutants from dispersing into the atmosphere, causing the concentration of fine particulate matter, PM2.5, in the atmosphere to reach dangerous levels. You have no idea what you're talking about. I have absolutely no idea, but that is your Jay, the, science uh, lesson for today. The lumberjack meteorologist. So you've always heard about PM 2.5. Uh, that is PM 2.5. They're the little particles. And you see you see that number on your mask. Oh, it protects from PM 2.5. I don't really know what it is, but it protects me. So, yeah, they're talking about these little smoke particles, but uh, th this is an issue every single year. Yes. And every year, the, the BMA run around and go, oh, We'll ask the Chinese temples to stop lighting Josh sticks, uh, or we'll ask people to sort of do odds and evens for driving so into the city. Say, sorry, Josh sticks? Are they Josh sticks? Josh sticks? You mean incense sticks? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've never heard of well, Josh sticks. The incense sticks, yeah. Oh, okay. And they, they do things like putting up the drones and f f spraying a litre of water in a tiny little area thinking that's going to do something, mm. and then they get the, uh, the big water sprays that spray the water you know, 50 metres into the air and think that that's doing something as well. None of these things do anything mm -hmm. to fix up the pollution problem. The big problem is these big multinationals, uh, big companies like Central, who own a lot of these uh, <coughs> farmlands or have got their licences with these farmers, and they give the farmers a pittance. And the farmers do whatever they can, as cheaply as they can, to get rid of the, uh, the waste and plant their next crop. And all that smoke comes down. Now, even if they got a control of what was happening in Thailand, when you look at the, the fire maps each year, you'll see that a lot of the fires are over the border in places like uh, Myanmar yeah. and in Laos. And so no matter what the Thai government do, they're not going to be able to control a lot of these fires in the other areas. So it is, it's a regional problem. And the people in Bangkok, where most of the population is, and the tourists coming between December and April, they go, oh, but look at the haze, look at the air pollution. I mean, today is beautiful. You, you can see for kilometres as far as the eye can see. But in another two or three months, that's not going to be the case. Right. And the city officials will be grinding their teeth and saying, oh, we must go and speak to the Chinese temples and, oh, look at the old buses. That's not the problem. Right. 
All right, uh, more on that on thetiger.com. Our last topic for today, we'll just have a quick look into a COVID update in Southeast Asia. Oh, oh. Tim, you were telling me that Thailand is still the number one COVID hit country in Southeast Asia. So it's an interesting situation. I mean, Thailand has done a lot to get the numbers down. We seem to be hovering for new cases around this 10,000 mark over the past uh, couple of weeks. We had a dramatic drop for a few weeks, Mm -hmm. but we're still hovering around that 10,000 cases a day. The deaths, I'm glad to report, have really plunged. I think today... Is Natty here? Natty's not here. It was was around about uh, 64, I think, today, 64 deaths. Very sad. Uh, but, of course, that number has really dropped dramatically over the past three or four weeks in particular. But Thailand's still number one in Southeast Asia, about 10,000 cases a day. Just looking very quickly through but the Philippines, about 7,500. Malaysia, 7,500 cases each. Singapore, 3,300 over the weekend. Vietnam, 3,200. I'm just sort of giving you some very average figures. Myanmar, 1,200. Although I think we could comfortably say that uh, there'd be a lot of misreporting in Mm. Myanmar at the moment. And then all the other countries around Southeast Asia are under 1,000, including Indonesia, which has got the largest population in the region. So, yes, Thailand is still number one, and it's looking at, in less than two weeks, reopening its borders to tourism. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen, we don't know. But stay tuned to Good Morning Thailand and all of our shows, especially uh, our news articles on thetiger.com, to be updated. Can I also wish uh, a new tiger newbie, a new tiger newbie, a tiger newbie, uh, let's call him a tiger cub, Golf did his very first newscast today on our Thai language YouTube channel called T Talk. -talk. That's right. So congratulations. And we've also got a new editor starting in T Talk today. Yeah. Uh, And other staff, I don't even know who half of them are. We'll find out. We're growing. We're growing. Blossoming into a. Festering, perhaps. Festering. All right, fair enough. Okay, Um, well, those are all the topics for today. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, Please continue to watch us every day of the week, Monday to Friday. Tim, anything to add? That's about it. Well, thank you for joining me today. And now next Monday, yes, just a a heads up. I'm going to be in Phuket, so we're going to have to do something picture in picture or do live some special magic live from New York. I mean Phuket. From Phuket. It's good morning, Thailand. Right. Um, thank you, Shai. Thank you, Jason, behind the scenes. Uh, congrats, Golf, on your first episode. And thank you, everyone, for watching the show. We'll see you tomorrow.